All right. Well, let's let's uh, delve into. I, I I finally caught up in chat after the break. So, hello again. I'm here. My software didn't derp out again. Um. Cheers. Hey, I have my invisibility potion. Ooh. Oh, is it on drive through? Yeah, yeah. If you you could shoot over anything as long as I have it as a reference to consider and and to look at um, you know any costs or whatever is involved with it. Invisibrew is best brew, Rhodium. Alright, so where we left off with our, our wizard here. Uh, we are, we need, we now, I'm speaking with an, uh, kind of a, a joisy accent. We now have to fill in our numbers. Usher says, one of the characters I play at times is a monk and I try to give him high defense. I name him Bobbin Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> You'd actually worship the god of Falchions. That sounds like the start of a good splat book, Gods of War. <laughs> it, actually, if I recall correctly, um, Bubonic One isn't the most played, like the 90% the of anyone who runs a cleric in Pathfinder. Uh, isn't the Falchion her weapon? More Neko than Joyzy. Okay, we're level five. Our key, our key ability as a wizard is int. And so that is sitting at a plus four. We start with one hero point and you can get more by doing things that I don't agree with. Um, so this is going to mean our class DC is going to be 19 to dodge our spells or other things that we're presenting to enemies to save against. Now, now let's get started, humans. <laughs> we have zero temp hit points. Our wisdom modifier is plus three. Uh, our proficiency is standard. So, all right how this works um, because you don't already have enough stuff to keep track of if you have no proficient if you're not proficient you're untrained I should say if you're untrained in something it is a minus two to whatever it is if you're trained it's your level if you are um No, I'm, is it minus one? Hang on. It's right here. Okay, yeah, to level plus three. So, trained is your level. Experts plus one. Masters plus two. Legendaries plus three. What that means for your proficiency, then, uh, is we're level five and we're trained in fortitude... Our proficiency here is going to be a plus six. Same with our reflex. However, because we're expert at will saves, it's a plus seven. And we have no item bonuses right now. So you can leave them blank or put a plus zero. Our con is plus one. Our dex is plus one. And our wisdom is plus three. So we have a will save of plus 10. We have a reflex save of plus 7. And we have a fortitude save of plus 7. Hey, funny man, great to see you. Yeah, 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 we're 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 delving into uh, Pathfinder 2nd edition playtest and we're building a wizard character. Dark Wolf says, so I got a DM question. I have an enemy with the command spell. I tried to use it on the Barbarian to make him run from battle, but due to some bardic inspiration, he made the save. Now, this enemy is getting surrounded, and we had to cut the session mid-battle. 
I was wondering, would I be able to have the enemy attempt to command a PC into attacking another? Something along the lines of betray. Um... I don't have my my hubba open right now, Dark Wolf. I, is there someone out there who can look up the command spell and uh, and help Dark Wolf out with this fifth edition D and D question? Sorry, Dark Wolf. I I don't have my physical one because my my briefcase with all the Curse of Strahd stuff is in the back of my car, so I I can't bring it up right now. And yes, Funny Man, this. This is the character sheet for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Um, as opposed to D&D. The standard. Or... Here's the revamped version that we traditionally use in our random character creation. So let's zoom back in and continue filling in our numbers. Uh, da -da -da -da. Our... We have a plus five from our proficiency, plus a three of wisdom, so our perception is plus eight. Well, yeah, the, the, so the, the checkpoints, the, the, as you presented it, or I mean, as it was presented in Xanathar's that you're bringing up memory lapse... It sounds like a, a hybrid fusion of milestones and experience points. Um, if you want to come up with a hybrid of milestones and checkpoints, um, I guess you can you can do that as well. Um, but in this case, why do you need the middleman? I just go right to milestones. Critical role just ended. You've never played Pathfinder. I have not either, funny man. Um, but Pathfinder is based on older and uh, an older edition of D&D, &D, a more complex one. And despite this being the second edition and a revision, uh, they have kept a lot of the convolution and the complexity uh, to their system. Um, I don't know why. And obviously, people had to sit down at some point in time and say, we're purposely making a system like this. Um, if you love it out there I, I'm not trying to make you feel bad because some people love this I, I want to delve in you know give me uh, you know a hundred thousand random Legos because I just want to build or it's like a it's like a new Minecraft world I have infinite po uh, uh, I have infinite possibilities and I have a lot of time that I can delve through I can dig I can build I can customize I can tweak and I can I can do all sorts of customization and that's fine that's one way you can role play um, and this is a system where you can min max really well you can care up you can you can make a super d duper d uh, specialized character um, that you can't do in in 5e or at least not nearly as easily because it is a more simplified system. I personally, funny man, um, haven't taken a shine to this. I'm doing it because I want to be open-minded. I want to give it a chance. And you know what? I might learn something new. Heck, there's a couple things I actually do like in this edition of Pathfinder that I might incorporate into a 5th edition game. Because on a, on a universal level, it seems to make sense. But there's, I think there's a lot of just fluff in here that could be eliminated. Or just things that are just... They're more complicated than they have to be. Diadems, do you win 18 and 11? Yes, you do. Uh, Dark Wolf, can you get Diadems uh, 75 experience points? They've made the complexity worse in this edition in point of fact. Okay. Yeah, well, because Numonica, you said that you've played first edition. Uh, this is like third edition D&D, &D, or 3.5, funny man. Where, look, 3, three and 3.5, there is so much content, so many add-ons and splat books and, and just things that you can tack onto your character. Where you're counting, you know... 
I get 10 free actions and three bonus actions and two swift actions, and then I get a move action and an attack action, but I can split my attack action. And you can do 11 billion things in third edition. If you can tr keep track of it all. Is it balanced? Eh. I guess it depends. You know, stick to the core three. Oh, it's it's balanced. Um, do you have act? Do you have the time, the effort, to look through all of the options? Maybe. Uh, some of us have more time than others. Um, but I think that when you have a glossary and an index, that's what what do we count? It was at least twenty pages long. Because everything has a mechanic, everything has a has a term, everything is so minutiaed out that it interacts with everything, and so when one gear turns, you have to check the ten other gears it's attached to. It's kind of discouraging because I don't want to. I want to R O L E play. I don't want to R O L L play in a system that is is is. Not forcing. I, I, I don't want to say force. They're, they're not forcing character optimization. They use the word optimized or optim. You know, to optimize your character. But this is. I I just feel like I'm tending a machine in a factory or something. You know, you, you push the button, you get a result. You push the button, you get a result. Level up. Thirty variables change. You better not miss one, because because the way that the system scales. You have to keep up. You can't miss scores. Ah, uh, glossary was 19.5. Okay, yeah. You played 3rd edition and beyond, but I just prefer 5e because it's so streamlined and simple. Um, but still D&D, so no two games are the same and everything works fine. I agree. I learned... Dungeons and Dragons in third edition, and I went to three five, and then I went to fourth. I I like fourth for various reasons, and I play fifth, and I really enjoy fifth. Um, because especially because a lot of this stuff was cut out or simplified because it just wasn't necessary. Memory says checkpoints based on plot and side plots which point towards the milestone itself, it would be strictly be nothing more than an experiment. And of course I'd let the players know it's nothing more than an experiment because I do see the potential of problems you could run into. While at the same time, on the side, I would keep track of the XP for each PC. That way, if I find a problem, I can adapt immediately without regards. If, if you want to keep track of all that stuff, Memory, then look, it's your game and you're the DM. Some people enjoy accounting minigames. And I'm not saying that negatively. I mean, the, 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 think of all the different types of video games that exist for different people. Are there guns in Pathfinder? Well, there's bombs. You, you can play as a, an alchemist and you can make explosives. There's probably guns. I don't know. I haven't looked. Uh, I, I'd have to go back in the, uh, in the equipment section and look for sure. Funny man, yeah, I believe Matt Mercer's Gunslinger was a transition from their Pathfinder home game. It's where Critical Role started. AG, in practice, 3.5 in Pathfinder was not that mechanical in that it lacked roleplay, R-O-L-L. -L. Uh, but you did have to rack a lot of bonuses and conditions. Yeah, and, and, and uh, skill synergies and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, let's continue adding numbers uh, because this is role playing. We are not proficient. Oh, pocket punch! Thank you very much for those bits. Uh, so our proficiency in armor. Um, well, if we're not wearing armor, because we we actually are untrained in any armor, so we have to just be wearing our skivvies, and then we'll just get our dex, which is plus one. Because otherwise, this would be a minus two if we wore any kind of armor. Uh, so we're going to have to be naked.
Memory lapse. If I were to do something like that, I would always be seeing myself having a kind of a contingency plan. Yeah, hey, we all have different styles, memory. I, I really hope that I'm not sounding condescending or like, yeah, whatever, you, you do that, whatever, scrub lord. That, that is not the case. Um, yeah, I would love to hear how that experiment goes, honestly. Uh, maybe, you know, if you come back, you're like, oh, this is actually the best thing ever. I've tried it. Yeah, it was, a, it was a little weird here. I made this adjustment and we came back and everything is balanced and wonderful or to some extent. Um, I would love to know about that because I'm just not naturally uh, disposed to do to do things the way that you do. And I say that with respect. That's the beauty of us as human beings. We all do things differently and we can learn from those differences. I'm learning from Pathfinder in a positive fashion, not just a <laughs> come on, let's all let's all hate on Pathfinder, guys. It's the popular thing to do. <laughs> um, it's it's actually a part of learning and finding out what you like, and not only what you like, but why you like it. And can you take other other ideas and incorporate them to improve your own life? Because if you don't expose yourself to other things, you'll never have those growth moments. Ah, I got you, Usher. Okay, our strength modifier is zero. Our constitution is a plus one. Our wisdom is a plus three. Our dex is a plus one. Our int is a plus four. And our charisma is a plus zero. So we're going to come up here and, I don't know, pretend that we have a wizard weapon of some kind. Um, if it is based on strength, so we'll just call this, I don't know, strength weapon. And we're going to call this ranged one a dex weapon. Uh, we have basic proficiency, so we get a plus five. Plus five. If it's, if it's some wizard weapon as we are trained in it. Our dex is a plus one and our strength is a plus zero. No items, so this is gonna be a plus five to the roll. See, d20 plus five, d20 plus six. And then whatever the damage dice are, so this is gonna be plus zero and this is going to be um, Wait, do you not add dex to range strikes? Hold on a, a moment. Why is that missing? Ranged weapons usually only use the weapon's damage die, though weapons with the propulsive trait sometimes add half your strength modifier. And thrown weapons add your full strength modifier. Oh. Gotcha. Okay. So range is just... If it's a D8 from a crossbow, it's a D8 from a crossbow. There, You don't get your dex uh, as a static modifier. Unless they have one of several keywords. And uh, heaven help you if you don't remember those keywords. Okay, so this would just be 1dx. And this would just be one, uh, or 1dx plus 0. So our, our range is going to be 1dx. Probably, I don't know, piercing, and we'll we'll make a bludgeoning up here. All right. Uh, pocket punch. There's so much stuff going on with this sheet. It is giving me a headache a tad. Uh, there is a lot going on. Um, I'm I'm sorry. 
I'm I, I'm the deliverer of a headache to you, Pocket Punch. Uh, Usher, I'm in a homebrew game. I use Tinker Tools to craft pistols. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. We actually made a, a gun kata monk as a random character. It just kind of happened. Hey, Victor, good to see you. Hello, Victor. Uh, the two players I had my campaign with are kind of... Oh. What happened, Victor? What's the story? You should be getting to bed. Okay, Dark Wolf, have a great night. Thank you for helping out with the EXP. No red terrain sacrilege, says AG. Dex attacks don't add dex mod for damage, I think. That is, that seems to be correct, Usher. Memory says, that way I could salvage the game if problems do arise and the problem and the players will still respect me as a DM and be able to trust me. I would always do my best to provide the best. I would always ask the players what their thoughts are on it, which is important. I agree. So Victor is playing with uh, someone named Tucker, kicked a questline NPC into a pit of spikes, and uh, Elias just wants to fight monsters. Oh. Well, are there any consequences for murdering, uh, for murdering citizens? Like, I don't know, is he going to get arrested? Is the game over because they, they just want to, they, they just want to be lol random murder hobos? Victor? Memory lapse, I would always as well ask the players of what their thoughts are on... Okay, yeah, yeah. So I got there. So, like a monk that used guns... Yes, exactly, Usher. Uh, we we built a gun kata monk. Uh, it was like an equilibrium monk. Actually, I believe it was a rock gnome monk that uh, used tinker tools. Or it, it might have been a halfling. Um, but took the sage background... Well, got it randomly. It was a, It was a randomly rolled character. But yeah, yeah, we made a gun cut a monk. It was all he was all equilibrium with explosives and pistols. Like he could just run around and pew pew everything. It was great. Uh, there's actually a YouTube video of that uh, of that character being created. Never be afraid to ask your players of what their thoughts are. I agree. Memory feedback is very important. Ag range is better than melee in that you don't have to get hot. So hot, so red to hit, but not to damage. Victor, well, there's not many NPCs considering it's a city infested with beasts and god spawns. Hmm. Oh, so th there's actually no consequence? Uh, well, so what did the NPC do to anger or upset this uh, player character of yours to resort to murder? Here you go, Usher. Got it for you. Pneumonica, in that case, they killed a questline NPC, then their chances of making it out of the city and beasts and god spawns just got a lot lower, I'd imagine. Tucker just thought this person seems like a threat and kicked... Wow. Well, Pneumonica may have a point. Any valuable information that she would have given him, whether she lives or not, do you think she's really going to anymore? No, I, I got you, AG. All right. Uh, we need to add in some stats now. Let's come over here. Uh, strength is a plus zero. 
That's only athletics. There's nothing for con. Wisdom. Um, wisdom's a plus three, so we're going to drop this in here. There we go. Dex is a plus one. Int is a plus four. Charisma is a plus zero. Here we go. All right. With those loaded, uh, we now are going to make sure that we're we're doing our arithmetic carefully here. Uh, our proficiency. All right. Now remember, we have that one skill feat that says if we're not trained in something, we get um, a plus one. Uh, we we get a plus one circumstance bonus or something along those lines. Every one of these skills has like nine variables that actually go into it. Um, so this is, you're actually seeing the Redux version. There's there's like nine or ten different things that can influence every single one of these roles. Um, so if we're not proficient, but we get this circumstance bonus, I'm going to put a, a one in parentheses. Um, but also because we're not proficient... Uh, that is going to be a minus two. And of course it doesn't... All right, so we're just going to do a plus one instead. No, minus one, minus one, minus one. But wait, then we have our level also. Our level is a part of our proficiency. Ah! Let's start over. We're level five. We are untrained, which is minus two. So we're at a three. Then we have the human skill feat saying if you are untrained, you get a plus one. Therefore, our proficiency is plus four for a skill in which we are not trained in this circumstance. I'm going to copy and paste this so I don't mess up my math elsewhere. There, 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 there. Uh, here, 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 and here. Okay. We are not only trained, but we are, uh, we're excellent or we're experts at Arcana. So it's our level plus one. So this is a plus six. We are also an expert in occultism. Okay. And then we're going to get a plus five for being trained in crafting. Arcana. Medicine. Nature. Okay. Because we're not wearing any armor, there, there's an... Uh, this armor can impose a, uh, a penalty on these four skills. So, minus zero. And there are no items right now that are adjusting things. So now we go through and we make sure that our, our arithmetic is the same. So plus five, plus six, plus four, plus five, plus four, plus five, plus five, plus nine. If we have the if we have a second lore, it's plus eight. 
So I'll put it in parentheses. I don't think we have a second lore, though. It's just a slot that's there. Plus eight for medicine. Plus eight for nature. Plus ten for occultism. Arcana should also be a ten. See, I... I, I swear I have a master's degree... And I just messed up arithmetic because I'm going blah, 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 at this at this character sheet. Hey, Barbarian Jim. Good to see you again. You can't sneak in on me. You're far too swole. Rodim says very tiny spikes. <laughs> or a big lady. Uh, they're as tall as a human. Pneumonica, also, if there are other survivors and they're in any level of communication, word may spread about these crazy vagabonds going around kicking people in the pits. Uh, they lose access to equipment and resources aplenty as NPCs now hide from them, set traps that impair them, lure monsters toward them, etc. Yeah. AG, in Pathfinder 1.0, there was a gunslinger class... Several classes with options to use guns, and any character could use a gun if they invested the feats. The guns were ball and powder guns. They mostly worked like other ranged weapons, but with some quirks. More of that tracking technical detail. Uh, Victor Tucker also almost got killed by a literal po a poodle reindeer monster. Oh my. You're going to go to bed. All right, Rody. Thank you for coming along on the journey as far as you have. Oh, did I forget per did I forget perception? I thought I got perception. No, here's perception. Five plus three. Got it. Cheers to you, Barbarian. AG, in practice, I think most people use some kind of PC gen to make the process easier. Uh, they should have one out. Probably. It would make it easier to track. And then what does that say about your system, too? You could argue for fourth edition D and D, it was the same because I use the character generator, and I use the I use the monster generator too. Gold Public, thank you very much for that host. Plus four, plus seven. By the way, every single one of these scores changes when you level up, every single time, and sometimes uh, more if your abilities go up. Also, it's not just adding one. To everything. Sometimes you're adding more because you're increasing your abilities on that level as well. Okay, there we go. Yes, that's true as well, Usher. So really, the only thing left to do now is to choose spells, I reckon. I mean, we can go shopping. It gives you something like 150 silver pieces. All characters get 150 silver. Uh, with which to shop. I'm not really worried about that, though. I mean, what, what, we're going to wear what? Some boxers and a, and a, a tank top or something, like a, a t-shirt. Um, you know, we might have a wizard staff, maybe. Although by level five, I don't know, we might, we might have tr uh, access to some treasure where we're expected to have a magical item already. Our resonance, let's see, our level's five. Our charisma's plus zero. So our maximum is five. Bulk, all capital letters, bulk. Uh, our strength is plus zero. 
So to be encumbered, our bulk is five and our max is 10 bulk. And we currently have zero because we woke up, we're in our skivvies, we roll out of bed and we're ready to adventure as a wizard. We'll grab our book, which probably doesn't add bulk, and, uh, and go from there. Okay, uh, so things and stuff. As a wizard, let's go back down here. You have power to cast arcane spells using the cast a spell activity and gain access to material casting, somatic casting, verbal casting actions. At first level, you can prepare up to two first level spells and four cantrips each morning. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay, we're trained in arcane spell rolls. So here's our spell roll. We're going to hit train. So our proficiency is going to be a plus five because we're fifth level. Our ability is going to be a plus four because that's our intelligence. So our spell roll in DC is going to be a 19. and a plus nine to hit. We are a prepared. We are a, oh, okay. Spell slots are prepared. And what do we fill in here? I don't know. These are for spell slots. Okay. And if we look at... Wizard spells per day. We're at fifth level, so it's 3-3-2. Three, three, I guess this is just like an X, like we're an arcane class with prepared spells. Uh, Victor, most of the NPCs don't communicate considering they're super spread out and there are only a few of them in each place. You use the AutoCalc fillable PDF, it's much faster, says Zentor uh, Zentari, welcome. Um, oh, there is one, okay, that will make it a lot, uh, a lot easier. Um, Padawan Blade. I've never played Pathfinder. Is it good? I have not played Pathfinder 1.0. Uh, we're reviewing... Last week we reviewed the rules for Pathfinder 2.0 and now we're making characters in the system. Um, so, Zen, uh, so, Padawan Blade. My personal opinion, and yours can differ. That's certainly allowed here. I do not prefer this system. Um, I, I don't, besides, if you have the, hmm, I want to make sure I'm phrasing this correctly and I'm being honest. If you like having a lot of options in front of you, if you're a very detail oriented person, if you like charts and graphs and keeping track of a lot of things, um, and like being involved with a bunch of like numbers and stuff swirling around you. Uh, if you want to build a mechanically very specific character, Pathfinder is going to be the system for you. As compared to 5th edition D&D, it is 
more crunch heavy or rules heavy. It is very mechanical. Um, as compared to 5th edition D&D. I believe, in my own opinion, that it would defeat the purpose to have an autofill. You wouldn't know where everything is coming from then. The breaking of spells into verbal somatic material actions is is one. Pathfinder, the things I like in, in Pathfinder 2. Have not playtested it yourself, though. Padawan, how much more different is Pathfinder to D&D? &D? Uh, yes, Pathfinder is based... So it's a D20 system. It ha yeah, it memory lapse, exactly. More numbers, more dice, uh, more this and more that. Way more feats, way more options uh, to, to custom blend your character mechanically. It's very crunchy, right? Crunch is mechanics, crunch is rules, crunch is interactions uh, between the, the different parts of the game. Fluff is role play, storytelling, uh, things along those lines. Cosmetic details. Um, so Pathfinder is is different because there is a lot more for you to keep track of and uh, and for you to consider as you're advancing in level. <clears throat> Pathfinder was good. It was more popular than 4E, but it's lost to 5E. Pathfinder was like 3 and 3.5. Yeah, I've heard people say uh, in my shop that, you know, it's like 3, 7, it's 3.75 or 3.9. Um... So Zentari, uh, do you have Zentari? Do you have a link to the autofill version or the autofill PDF? That would be awesome. Thank you very much for that. I, I appreciate you you sharing that resource. Um, so it it comes down to well look, um, Padawan Blade, and I've said this for the the last couple days we've been broadcasting this. I intend to to have Pathfinder Second Edition stocked on my shelf next summer when it comes out officially. Oh, thank you, Zent. Um, and if someone came into my store and asked why, why would I want to buy Pathfinder over D&D 5th edition? I would bring up where Pathfinder is strong here. You can make a mechanically crunchy character to a, a very specific, uh, fine-tuned set of parameters. If you like numbers and you like, um, you know, you, you like kind of having that I'm in the middle of things as a, as a player this will put you in the middle of a lot otherwise personally i wouldn't recommend it i'll still carry it and i'll make honest recommendations because i don't want to sell this book to someone who's just going to come back and be like oh this is garbage and i hate role playing now because you you sold me on a on a system that is it's just you know why is it like this i have friends who play D and and what can my what can i do in pathfinder that i can't do in in dungeons and dragons Honestly, I can't tell you. Aside from make a more detailed uh, character with certain abilities. But at that point, you're just like, well, I'm going to maximize DPR and I, uh, you know, because storyline, I mean, you could run story. Fluff is fluff. Doesn't matter the system. We could run Dark Heresy. We could run Made RPG. And, and it'll be, you know, it, it'll be what it is. Um... So it, it really comes down to your personality. It comes down to, do you just want to play something different? Um, are you burnt out on 5th edition D&D? It's possible. It's very possible to do. And if you want to go to something, you know, and you say, well, maybe it's a little too simple. I, I want to try something more complex. You could graduate into, if you want to say that it's a graduation, up into Pathfinder. Where it is more complex. There's more things to track. There's more interactions. Um, there's more things you can and can't do uh, because of everything being written out 
Um, everything has a keyword, everything has an interaction and a cross-reference, and uh, a chapter page, etc. In order to access the optional dungeons, the players must have a bloody eyeball, ritualistic blood, and a skull of a dark beast. Is that what they're trying to hunt down? I mean, it, it, it seemed kind of difficult then if you have uh, if you have some murderous PCs that are just feeling threatened by someone and, and, and killing them on their way to a dungeon. I think they're going to miss a lot of this optional content that you wanted to uh, run or have planned, Victor. Memory Lapse, as a store owner, you would have to know the difference in the system so you can explain to them how they differ. I agree, Memory. I agree. I really hope for any of you who are who have played Pathfinder first or you've already had experience with second edition, I don't want to come across as cynical. I have nothing against the people at, at Paizo. I'm not wishing ill on them or their families or that, oh, this is, you know, a disaster to the role-playing community or, you know, huff and puff, huff and puff. Um, it's it's not like that. It's we're exploring the differences in systems. And differences are going to come up, and something, and, and when you make a comparison, something's going to be strong, something's going to be weak in various degrees. But everything, you know, you're still going to have a, a, a dominant trait and a, and a uh, recessive trait, or you know, some sort of like other, like subservient trait or a strength or a weakness or something like that. Okay, so that is, this is our two hit is plus nine, and our DC to mitigate our effects is 19. Uh, we're casting arcane spells as a wizard, and uh, we have these slots. Now, as you can see, we, are, we have a lot of spells to prepare, or we have a lot of spells in our book. Then we can prepare three, three, and two. And now it's time to go to the book, see what spells are out there. No, you can find an eyeball from a corpse, the blood from any altar, and for the skull, you just need to kill a huge skeleton beast imbued with lightning. Okay. Usher says, like I said before, it seems really rules and stat heavy compared to 1.0. D&D is more beginner-friendly, Pathfinder is more customizable. It's a decent two-sentence summary. Speaking of made RPG, I once actually contributed a number of elements to a made RPG slash, slash eclipse phase hack. Really? Now, I, I, so I have experience, uh, I, well, I've played in Eclipse phase. Uh, I have made RPG. I, I don't think I've played. I, I mean, I've gone through the rules and made a character and such. You've contributed a number of elements to a made RPG slash Eclipse phase hack. You can actually find it online. Still very interesting, Mnemonic. Mnemonica. What a crossover, too. <laughs> I think I might be able to word it as such. D&D is more story and setting heavy, whereas Pathfinder is more character customization. Yeah. If I want to maximize my DPR, I will definitely be playing Pathfinder. I, I want to kill as much stuff as I can because that's my character. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's called Eclipse Made. Sure, I'll look it up, Mnemonica. AG, I'm a I'm a Pathfinder fan. I think it's the best form of D&D, but I can't recommend Pathfinder over 5e to anyone. I understand, and you know what, AG? Uh, not that I was trying to solicit that as an answer from you. I really respect that. If you say, yes, I like this, but I really can't give a recommendation, what that means is that you're playing from the heart and you're willing to take on whatever extra roles or responsibilities or keeping track of whatever in order to either teach new people or to just play the game that you you enjoy for your own reasons that's very respectable ag you know to be able to to be able to hold an opinion that uh maybe you don't want to agree with uh but you do or you're making an active recommendation against it yet you're still open to the thing you are recommending to 
not necessarily get into, at least not at the start. That's really big of you, man. Or woman. I'm, I, I won't presume. Eclipse made. Yeah, I'm going to look that up real quick. Oh, there it is. Being a transhuman slash post cyberpunk hack for Made RPG. I am going to save this. Thank you very much for that, new Monica. Elias and Tucker also killed a hunter who tried to blast them to bits with a Gatling gun. Not even kidding. Tucker screamed like he was a nom. Well, I mean, in that case, it sounds like they're defending themselves. If they just kick someone into a spike pit because they got a, a weird feeling up their spine, that's that's murder, right? Uh, skills, feats, equipment, spells. Here we are. Uh, so we are a prepared spell. Um, we are arcane. On spell casters with powers, spell schools. We went with Universalist, so there's not a special doohickey for that. Uh, spell traits, all kinds of keywords, all kinds of definitions. Um, um, all kinds of rules and rulings. Okay, Arcane Spell List. So arcane casters, they're not mixing it up between sorcerer spell list and wizard and all that. What you know, There's four types of magic, and here's the spell lists if you have access to it. Mnemonica, I mean, shooting back when you're shot at is understandable and usually legal. Memory lapse, in my opinion, I think Pathfinder would be the first tabletop RPG to emphasize more on the side of what video game players call ARPGs. So therefore, Pathfinder is more of a tabletop ARPG. Oh, an action RPG? But, however, that doesn't mean D&D can't be that. Pathfinder just wants to be more like an action RPG. I can see it as being a lot more action-oriented because of the, the intrinsic nature of, you have stats, we keep giving you stats, use your stats, you know, R-O-L-L -L play. Role play with your dice. Everything, you know, high risk, high reward. You know, we're... It, and I'm not saying this to badmouth Pathfinder. It, it, it does... There's a, a niche for it, right? It, it is a popular... Um, it is a, a popular entity. And it's, it's scratching an itch some people have to just... Power game. You know, to, to get big numbers. Um, you know... I play Final Fantasy XIV... And, you know, damage per round, or I guess damage per second, DPS in that game is probably, it's kind of a meme, but it's probably like what the damage per second with a level 20 WoW character is. Because you get to a point where you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm a level 120 whatever, and I'm dealing 11 billion damage per second. Uh, get good, scrub. You know, so you're, you're chasing the big numbers. You're chasing the, the high-end performance. You're, you're chasing that, I, I'm going to fine-tune my skill tree, or in this case, uh, a bunch of your feats, to make a super fine-tuned character that's really good in this, in this circumstance.
Victor says, well, the person Tucker kicked was a hunter slayer who would have asked them to kill anyone who hunts beasts. Maybe have the PCs go down after the NPC to the spike pit and they have the key for, or a key or item they need. That's trick murder. Not if they can find their way down somewhat safely. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at our arcane spells and choose a spell book, and then our wizard will be complete. Uh, I mean, we'll delve into you know the, some of the mechanics of the spells and and how you'd go about casting a spell, um, but let's let's choose some here. We have ten cantrips. One, two, three, or eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, we have ten cantrips. Some of these, ooh. I don't know. I don't know necessarily what all of them do. But we'll look them up. Let's, let's choose some fun ones here. Let's go... Acid splash, because acid's good in a lot of different uh, situations. To, you know, outside, even outside of, um, even outside of uh, combat, you can use acid to do a lot of different things, role play wise, R O L E play. Uh, Dancing lights is a good one. We can detect magic intrinsically, so we don't need to worry about that. Sure, let's disrupt some undead. And then we'll make a good, 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 good ghost sound. Mage Hand is a fun one. Message. Press the digitation. Ray of Frost. I don't know what Read Aura is. That sounds kind of cool, though. And let's go. We only have a, an 11 AC. Let's. I don't know. If something's going to hit us, it's going to hit us. I don't think shield's really going to matter at this point. Let's go Tanglefoot. There we go. Then we get all of these uh, first level spells here. Ooh, so many spells. All right. Uh, what are some cool ones? I, it doesn't. The, the mechanics here don't really matter. I, I just want to choose some spells, fill up our spell book, and then we can we can peruse the details of the spells on a little bit here. So let's go. I don't know what Ant Hall is, but that sounds kind of cool, doesn't it? Ant Hall. Um. Create water. Whoa, we got a case of the goblin pox. Grease is a good one. Illusory disguise, illusory object, and item facade. Kind of shades of gray, it sounds. Long strider. Ooh, that mage armor could be good. Of course, magic missile. Oh, interesting. Mending is a first level spell. Now let's take mending. Negate aroma. That is very specific. Uh, ray of enfeeble. Sleep. 
sleep. Oh, a spider sting. Let's see what that is. And unseen servant. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so yeah, that's what we get at level two. We get two spells. Then we get two spells at level three that are level two magic. Level four is le also that. And then level five. I like indicating at which level we get the spell for a reference. Shield blocks magic missile. Oh yeah, I suppose it does. Um, my campaign doesn't have shields. Um, AG for EX, it's a shame that Glorantha died with RuneQuest. For my money, Glorantha was the best written game world. So, alright, it sounds like Glorantha is the name of the world of RuneQuest. Uh, RuneQuest. Let's you carry five times your capacity. That's Ant Hall. Okay. Helps to carry stuff. Got it. Grease is good. Makes difficult terrain. Uh, still have old edition of RuneQuest supplements. Not the core rules, though. Oh, so there's a RuneQuest, uh, a RuneQuest tabletop? Well, I guess that makes sense, right? There was a... Um, heck, there's a World of Warcraft tabletop. And I'm not... Uh, it's not the meme that 4th uh, edition is World of Warcraft because it's an MMORPG. Um, they, there was actually a World of Warcraft um, RPG. Uh, there was also an EverQuest base tabletop RPG. <laughs> Does this rag smell like chloroform? Anyone know where I can get the core rulebook for RuneQuest? And I uh, and I mean old edition. Uh, Victor, I wish I could help you out. Aside from online marketplaces like um, eBay or Half.com, which is effectively eBay, you might be able to find it at some uh, at, at Amazon, maybe some other uh, big uh, bookstores. Or you could try Craigslist. There's a lot of game, like people trade Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon and other card games and RPGs through there. Video game stuff too. The RuneQuest rules were eh, but the supplements, OMG. Well, what about the supplements? I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. If you like Glorantha, they updated it for 13th Age if you like that system. Yeah, Zentari is coming out with the, the info. RuneQuest was originally tabletop. Oh, okay. Wait, oh, you know what? I was thinking of RuneScape. I'm so I'm a derp. I'm sorry. RuneQuest was originally tabletop. I was thinking of RuneScape. See, my favorite setting is one nobody wants to play in. Tecumel by Professor M. A. R. Baker, aka Empire of the Petal Throne. Uh, I haven't heard of it, Numonica, so I, I couldn't tell you if I'd want to play it or not. Um, can, do you want to get a little bit into the setting? What What is it? Why? What is compelling you? Memory lapse. The only thing to remember is Pathfinder wouldn't exist without D&D, so the only reason why Pathfinder is the way it is is... Well, yeah, because uh, they have the copyright info for the open game license. So it's married to... It, it, it's really married to it. And that goes back to what Maddie said before. What can I not do in D&D that I can do in Pathfinder? Sure, you might have more numbers to crunch and more to keep track of on a character sheet, but what I can't, but what can't I do in D&D that I can do in, P in Pathfinder? In truth, and again, it goes back to what Maddie said. It would come down to personal preference of the two systems. Yeah, hey AG, yeah, Zentali's giving us the hookup. Uh, Daily, hello Daily. Always worth looking at drive through RPG 2 for anyone. Oh, that's a good point, Daily. That's a very good point. Um, yeah, Victor, try drive through RPG. Victor, you still have your new lean character sheet. AG says, I think the old core rune quest is available in PDF. And Usher says, oh, I have to go again for about 30 minutes. All right, Usher. Hey, come and go as you please. Uh, 
Oh, some level two spells, huh? <laughs> Let's go create deafness. Glitter dust. Phantom Steed comes in handy. Um, oh, actually, there's invisibility. And then finally, level three spells. Uh, we get two of them. Ghostly weapon. And lastly, but not leastly, let's take um, mind reading. There we go. All right, so we have uh, we have a, a lot of uh, we have a lot of different spells, different schools, different things that it does. We have a generalist wizard uh, who can do a lot of things, and then we can come down here and then go into what the spells do. Uh, so let's look at uh, Disrupt Undead. How about that? Okay, here we are. Let's zoom in. You infuse the target with energy. You deal 1d10 positive damage. The target must attempt a fortitude save. Heightening increases the damage. Uh, so on a success, the target takes half damage. So this, let's go over here to Disrupt Undead. So this is heightened to a level 3 spell. Because we can cast level 3 and your cantrips automatically go through that that level up process. Actions, uh, somatic and verbal. And I guess if you there's if you have room for it, you could put what page two sixteen, so you can you can consult it. There's a lot of magic, a lot of redundant magic. You'll notice in 5th edition D&D, blindness and deafness are on, on they're the same thing. Enlarge and reduce or shrink is the same thing. Heighten 3rd and 5th. Okay, so here we go. Heighten 3rd, uh 1d10 plus your spell ca uh casting modifier. So I guess if you want to make a note that this is 1d10 plus 4 positive damage. Uh, Usher wins against the Ogre. Nice. Yep, you just got there too. What a battle, Usher of Agony. Good job on that. Mnemonica, Empire of the Petal Throne is actually the first RPG setting ever published, though it was bastardized a bit by Gary Gygax. It was a science fantasy setting that was really slipstream. People dislike it in part because things like slavery and prejudice were open and institutional in the setting. I've seen some people call it wish fulfillment. You know, Mnemonica, as someone who's open-minded... I don't mind if, if that is a part of a game, right? It's the world, and you could be against it, or you can be for it. And even if you're playing a character that is, yeah, I live in a world of slavery. 
Does that mean you as a human being support it? No. Doesn't It doesn't have to mean that. Look, as a GM, you have to play... You have to play villains. You have to play murderous, you know, crazies when you are hopefully not murderous nor crazy yourself. So, I mean, stuff like that, it, for me, in in my context, my comfort zone, I don't let that sort of stuff rile me up. Unfortunately, it does rile others up. And in fact, uh, to the point where in this, in this playtest book, like on three separate occasions it it would this book would absolutely have a fit with that as any kind of a setting in your own homebrew game at your dinner table and then of course it goes on and it creates a gender locked option uh, halfway through the book and I'm like sure okay I don't disagree with the ideas presented but the fact that you're dropping it in several times repeatedly and you're trying to tell people how to enjoy their own personal game. I don't know. I had those rants before. I don't need to go on, on down that path again. But New Monica, look. Settings are settings. Games are games. Characters are characters. And oftentimes by challenging our own beliefs. By challenging our own morals. We actually grow as a person. We, we can grow more compassionate. We can grow more thoughtful. We can consider things that we hadn't before. So, I mean, hearing that, it, it sounds like it would be a challenge, right? Like, oh, I, I don't know if I could play in a system like that. Like, how would I get in the mood? Well, challenge yourself. Put yourself in there. You don't have to agree with it. And, and go and grow. Spell cards are nice. Having run Faith, the sci-fi RPG, I've come to really like gear and NPC cards. Uh-oh, DJ's going on a random epic. Ooh, an Aboleth. Ten and nine, and unfortunately, uh, DJ, you're now a slimy minion of the Aboleth. Uh, rest in pepperonis. Victor, found it! Oh boy, here I come, Glorantha. <laughs> You've been doing really good with those battles, and you're gone for a bit. Yeah. Mm. Yep, those those rolls. Glorantha was written by this quirky hippie shaman dude. Uh, it's the mythology, races, gods, religion, etc. were very, very good, in my opinion. Uh, but it's a matter of taste, of course. No, I understand. Hey, TJ, good to see you. Noise. As a GM, the crazies are the fun ones. You get to let your inner thoughts out. Um, that's like the Bruja in the 5th edition Masquerade uh, that took place in July. Alright, Victor. Be well. Thanks for sharing your story. I'm sorry you're getting frustrated, but keep at it. Hopefully, hopefully you can reform these players. Journeyman, hello! We are finishing up our review of a Pathfinder 2nd edition wizard. And we're also talking about some other systems. You know, we're comparing, contrasting, or sometimes we're just having a side conversation through nostalgia goggles about, oh, I remember this system, or this is a roleplay challenge, or this is very crunchy, this is very fluffy, etc. and so forth. DJ, yeah, you can always try and beat Epic from time to time, and you can always grind up the experience to, to get back up there again. Yeah, it's been a great night, Journeyman. In fact, uh, we've... I mean, aside from going into the minutia of what all of the spells do, the character itself is finished. All right, so we back out. Here's our here's our spells. Um, although it looks like I would run out of room pretty quickly as a, as a wizard, let alone anything else here. I wonder if I'd almost have to double up a line and say, you know, I've ant hall slash create water or something along my. You know, if you prep the spell, you can put the check mark here. We made a wizard, TJ. Oh, actually, we do have some powers that we can use as well. Some fearsome wizard powers.
What is it here? Universalist is how we went. You can choose not to specialize in an arcane school and instead become a universalist wizard. If you do, you can use the drain arcane focus once each day per each spell level you can cast. Instead of only once, you gain an extra wizard class feat. Okay, so we had that. I thought something gave us powers also. I, I could be wrong. Or is that Hand of the Apprentice? Yeah, here it is. You gain the Hand of the Apprentice Universalist power. You gain a pool of spell points you can spend to cast Universalist powers. You can cast a Universalist power that you have only by spending spell points, not by using spell slots. Like a cantrip, your Universalist power is automatically heightened to the highest level of spell you can cast. Your maximum number of spell points is equal to your key ability modifier, minimum zero. You regain all your spell points when you prepare your spells. Some feats let you learn more Universalist powers, and such feats typically increase your pool of spell points. All right, so we come down here. Spell points, our ability is four, because that's our intelligence. We have no feats that increase that, so I guess that means we have four spell points. And our power is Hand of the Apprentice. So, Heighten 3. And we we're, paying, we're seeing page 228. Hmm. <laughs> uh, where are we? Hand of the Apprentice. You hurl a hand melee weapon at the target, making a ranged strike using your proficiency with a weapon or with spells, whichever is worse. And your spell casting ability modifier to damage rather than your strength. Whenever the attack succeeds or fails, the weapon flies back to you and returns to your hand. Okay. So this is somatic and verbal. And it looks like this costs one point. And we have four. So we can do that four times. There we go. Okay. Ooh, I fell a little bit behind in chat. Sorry about that. DJ draws from the deck of many things. Oh, nice. Well, you have a knight following you around to help. TJ tempts fate and goes on a roll through the plains. A poisonous snake jumps out. Stops on a five. Oh, no. TJ, there's a snake in your boot. And uh, you are bit and blarg. You tried to step on the snake. <laughs> you asked for a res, please, and now you come back as a male human sorcerer. Seems good, TJ. And yeah, they're talking about 5th uh, edition uh, VTM Journeyman. Memory Labs. At first I thought I wouldn't ever play Pathfinder when I got into tabletop RPGs, but now I see I wouldn't be opposed to running a game for a group of players because I know I could pull it off as long as... It more along the lines of a one-shot or one-off. But to be honest, Pathfinder is just not my cup of tea. Too much going on with the character sheets for my liking. My theory, keep things simple because nothing ever gets any uh, bigger than the little things. I agree. Because so many things are defined, when you make a choice about what you can do, the eight other things on that list are now things that you can't do. DJ's going another random epic. Ooh, the dreaded Strahd. You do attack with advantage. Oh, snap. Look at that. You defeat Strahd Von Zarovich and, uh, and get your 2,000 back. Unfortunately, some of the runs are just refunds. There you go. All right, so and it would be up to us to detect what's going on here. You Every turn you get three actions. So it looks like most spells are going to have two different kinds of actions. Giving you room to move with your third or, I don't know, something else along those lines. But uh, with the minimum of two, that means you're probably not going to be casting two spells around. You think you just won the campaign you're hosting at the game store. Or 
Did you? <gasps> Philosophized. <laughs> Actually, uh, one of the players had a very close run-in with Strahd in, in this uh, in this play session. Um, it was uh, it was very interesting. This is a very things are, are things are heating up. We're we're building to the end of the campaign as the characters are on their way to Castle Ravenloft in order to confront Strahd, who's invited them over for dinner after things happened that I'm not going to get into because I don't want to spoil the story for you. Well, you, you defeated a Strahd, not the Strahd. Come on now, DJ. <laughs> so here you have it. It's a level 5 wizard. We did it, everyone. dun da da, -da. Lots of options, lots of things to consider. I hope my explanations have been... I hope my explanations have been informative. I really do. Just because I don't prefer this system. Um, I've been open with my biases. I have been forthcoming with my reservations. I would still encourage you... Look, this is free. You could just go to the Paizo website and download your own copy. Okay? You should download it if you haven't yet and look at it. Give it a try yourself. You might find you'll like Pathfinder. I, for me, it's not for me. Don't take your glory away. <laughs> uh, by the way, since we've made it to the, uh, towards like the third session, right? We're in the, the final home stretch. Uh, thank you all for coming along on the uh, on the conversation of about Pathfinder, for contributing your humor, your wit, and wisdom. So there's 40 experience points for you all to uh, to enjoy and hang on to. And, uh, you know, everyone, it's almost 3 a.m. now, and um, I've been staying up kind of late these past couple nights, so what I think we're going to do, let's go raid someone. You, I, I wouldn't mind you going through some other systems like Fantasy. Well, hey, if this is what you all want to see, we can take a break from character creation and things like that, and we can do system reviews for a little while. I don't mind incorporating that in. I don't feel like I'm, I'm super locked into, I have to only generate characters and that's it. Uh, so DJ, I, w I can cover that sort of content, yes. Uh, maybe because we made some characters here, uh, we have tomorrow and Saturday, so maybe we can review that Unearthed Arcana, uh, tomorrow. And so we'll just spend this week reviewing some side stuff, uh, you know, we, we can button up Pathfinder, and maybe tomorrow we'll review the races in, uh, Return to, in the Return to Ravnica. Um, playtest packet for Unearthed Arcana. Does that sound good? Informative stream. Hadn't taken the time to leave through PF2 yourself. You're very welcome, AG. I, I have tried to approach things, even if I'm like, eh, with some humor and some context. Thank you for sticking around. I do try and run an informative stream. Bit of a talk show, bit of, you know, wit and wisdom, uh, comparison and contra in, in contrast. Look, at the end of the day, am I losing sleep that a system like this exists? Heck no. I'm glad that there's actually a system out there for people who are looking for a system like this. You know, even though it's not my system, I, as in, like, one that I would play, hey, it could still be fun. Um, so for all of you who followed, thank you for doing so. Stick around. Let's go raid Own Dog Games. It looks like he's playing some D&D &D on Roll20. Um, he, on Fridays, he runs a 3rd edition. Speaking of 3rd edition, he runs a 3.5 campaign at his tabletop in his home. Looks like he might be uh, doing another session online. So let's go give him a, a, a follow. Well, I mean, well, I mean, follow. He's, a, he's an awesome guy. Um, uh, and I, it, you can wear your nostalgia goggles with 3rd edition with him because, like, that's his bread and butter. 
Um, so yeah, we're going to go raid Own Dog Games. Thank you so much for coming along on this journey. We'll button up Pathfinder here. And uh, tomorrow, we'll we'll delve into this new Unearthed Arcana about the races of Ravnica. And, and we'll get into strengths and weaknesses, and we'll do some examination uh, and go from there. System reviews could allow for others to know what they like, especially if they're new to TTRPGs. I agree, Memory. We, we can incorporate that stuff. New Monica, thank you for uh, coming along on this, too. I hope as we continue our, our journey, for those of you who, who found this channel through Pathfinder, um, thank you. I hope you do stick around and you continue to be a member of the community because it's not just D&D &D that we do. Um, and I'm happy to revisit, you know. Actually, uh, from what I understand, there's actually already an update that was uh, uh, like an errata or something that was put out for this book based on some feedback. Yep, we're going to raid Own Dog Games. Let's do that right now. And if you all have suggestions for other content you'd like to see, uh, reviews, compares, contrasts, uh, you, would you like to have interviews and uh, of yourself or if there's a, another broadcaster or someone in the industry that I can get a hold of and we can talk and have an open Q&A, that sort of thing, let me know here or especially on Discord. Thank you, everyone, very, very much. <laughs> Peace.